In this tutorial, I'm going to go over information contained in Section 7 of the Pilot's Operating Handbook for the Cessna 172S aircraft. Here we'll cover airplane and system description. As always, we start off with the table of contents, which gives us all the information that we can expect to see. Next, we have the introduction, and it says, this section provides description and operation of the airplane and its systems. Some equipment described herein is optional and may not be installed in the airplane. Refer to section 9, Supplements, for details of other operational, optional systems and equipment. Now, before we proceed forward, I'll make a little side note here. I will not go over these systems in great detail. I will just give you a very quick rundown of what's itemized in this uh, section. I'm going to make another series of tutorials specifically on aircraft systems for the Cessna 172S and in those tutorials I will actually go through each of these sections one by one in great detail. I'll discuss them and I'll actually show you uh, where they are in the aircraft, how this information can be utilized, etc., etc. Another important point is that it's very important for you to really have a fundamental understanding of how these systems work as a pilot because when you have a failure in the aircraft, not if, but when you have a failure in the aircraft, because it's inevitably going to happen, you need to understand how the systems function so that you can quickly and effectively troubleshoot any problems in the air and either minimize the risk or if you know from um, your understanding of the systems that this problem is going to quickly snowball out of control, you're going to get the airplane down as quickly and as safely as you can. Whereas in another case, it might be a problem, but it's something that you can uh, deal with in a timely manner and still safely make it to your airport and then fix the change when you land uh, if you talk to a certified mechanic. So we've got the airframe which comes first basically tells us how the airplane is constructed we've got information on the flight controls and the trim system we've got these beautiful drawings which show you exactly how the rigging works from the control yoke which are the pilot inputs all the way to the in this case ailerons which is the output of the system here we have the same thing for the rudder control We've got the elevator control system and elevator trim. Notice in this aircraft that they are separate uh, systems. And so, in a sense, you have a dual redundancy. If the control yoke doesn't work, you can still control the airplane in pitch using the elevator trim, or vice versa. Now we detail the instrument panel. We've got the pilot side instrument panel layout. We've got the center panel layout. We've got the right or co-pilot panel layout. And then we've got the center pedestal layout. And all of that is shown over here on the pilot side, center, co-pilot side, and pedestal. And then notice on the control yoke, we've got this detail A. And we can see an expansion of detail A over here, which basically shows you all the buttons for the autopilot and the microphone which is found on the pilot side yoke and all the items you see here with numbers on it has an associated uh, list over here next we have information on the flight instruments we got the attitude indicator the airspeed indicator the altimeter the HSI or horizontal situation indicator We've got the VSI, or Vertical Speed Indicator. We've got Ground Control. We've got the Wing Flap System. 
We've got the landing gear system and baggage compartment. We've got the seats. We've got the seat belts and shoulder harnesses. Here we can see a diagram of the seat belts and harnesses. Here we've got entrance doors and cabin windows. And just a quick side note, it's very important that it might be obvious to you how these things work, but if you're flying with passengers, you're required by the FAA, specifically the FARs, to instruct all your passengers on how to safely, quickly, and effectively utilize not only the seat belts, but the doors and windows to the airplane in event uh, of a, an accident or a crash, they need to know how to safely and quickly get out of the airplane. So um, don't just shrug this off as something that everybody should know because not everybody does. Here we've got the control lock. We've got the engine and engine controls. We've got the engine instruments. Here we've got the RPM or tachometer. We've got information on fuel flow, oil pressure, oil temperature, cylinder head temperatures, exhaust gas temperatures, what to do if you have a brand new airplane and you're still in the process of breaking in the engine, the engine lubrication system, the ignition and starter system, the air induction system, the exhaust system, the fuel injection system, the cooling system, the propeller itself, we've got the fuel system, we've got the fuel distribution and fuel indicating system, here we've got fuel calculations, here you can see a really great diagram which you should be able to hopefully go up to a whiteboard and draw this out from memory to your flight instructor um, as you get more and more proficient and get towards the end of your training, you really should know this system inside and out. It's not terribly complicated. You got two uh, tanks on the wings. They come together through this valve, the fuel selector valve. Go through a few vents, uh, or not vents, but um, strainers and pumps, and eventually get to the engine. So there's nothing terribly complicated here. You can really reconstruct this diagram if you just uh, don't get overwhelmed. You just take a deep breath. Think about what's in the airplane. You've got fuel tanks, you've got a fuel selector valve, you've got a mixture control, and you've got a primer. Well, given that, and maybe you might have an optional uh, auxiliary fuel pump, that in and of itself should give you almost 90% of this picture. And then you think to yourself and you realize, well, we've got fuel drain valves, and so, okay, you've got a strainer here, and you got fuel drain valves over there, and I've got fuel quantity indicators, so that gives me that part. So it's 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 really very intuitive. Um, just don't get overwhelmed. Here we've got the auxiliary fuel pump operation, fuel return system, fuel venting. Remember, fuel venting, every time you get into the airplane on the pilot side, there's that little vent that always leaks fuel out of it slowly, slowly. So you should know that. We've got the reduced tank capacity, the fuel selector valve, fuel drain valves, then we've got the brake system, we've got the electrical system, and I think the electrical system would be the one that's the most hidden or removed from the pilot because that's just wiring, and so you don't really get um, quite the same mental picture as you do with the fuel system. So here we can see the electrical system, and if you stop to think about it, this is really actually not that obscure. And here we can see the electrical system again. This is a bit more complicated, granted, than the um, steam gauge or analog Cessna 172s, where you kind of had um, two main bus bars. This one has more because of all the um, avionics, like the Garmin G1000 in it. Here we can see the enunciator panel for the G1000, the master switch, standby battery switch. This is something new for the electronic flight displays that you wouldn't see on the older airplanes. We've got the avionic switch. That's the same as always. 
Here we've got system monitoring and enunciations for the electrical system, the bus voltage. We've got the same thing for ammeters, standby battery enunciation, low voltage enunciation, um, high voltage enunciation, circuit breakers and fuses, external power uh, receptacle, exterior lighting, interior lighting. Here we've got cabin heat, ventilation, and defrosting system. Here you can see another great diagram. And again, very intuitive. Every time you do your pre-flight, you notice that you've got those holes on the leading edge of the wing. That's where you get the air in for the cabin. You've got a big, two big holes in the front of the nose for air over the engine, and some of that gets passed in for the heating and or air conditioning if you have it. And then you've got this little side vent on the airplane that you would notice when you do your pre-flight inspection. So all of this is stuff you've already seen before. It's just taking that and translating it into a diagram of the systems of the airplane. Here we've got the pitot-static system, the vacuum system, we've got the attitude indicator, vacuum indicator, and low vacuum enunciation. Here you can see that and how it would work on your classic analog attitude indicator, which if you have an electronic system, you hopefully have one of these as a standby. That might not necessarily be true if you have an experimental or home-built aircraft, but you should expect to have a backup, a mechanical backup, in the case of a certified airplane. Here we've got the clock and the outside air temperature indicator, the stall warning system. Next we've got standard avionics, we've got Garmin display units, the audio panel, integrated avionics unit. We've got the AHARS, which is the attitude and heading reference system, and we've got the magnetometer. Air data computer, we've got the engine monitor, transponder, XM weather, and radio data link. The GFC 700 automatic flight control system, basically the autopilot. Here we can see a diagram of that. And again, this is very straightforward. You got two displays in the cockpit. You've got your control yoke, which has uh, buttons on it, which can control the autopilot. And what controls the autopilot? Well, or how does the co autopilot control the airplane? Well, it's got to actuate the surfaces, and it can only do that with an elevator actuator or aileron actuator. And no surprise, it goes to the aileron. So this is really very straightforward. Here we've got the avionics support equipment, so we've got cooling fans. This is an electronic device, it's a computer, just like your computer has a cooling fan. We've got antennas, you need an antenna to receive a signal. We've got the microphone and headset, always had that. Auxiliary audio input jack, 12 volt power outlet. Here we've got static dischargers, that's nothing new. Here we've got the ELT and the cabin fire extinguisher. Again, nothing new. We've got carbon monoxide detection system. And that's it for chap or section seven. And then we get into section eight. So there's a lot of really, really cool stuff in uh, section seven. It's a fun read. It might take two or three times going through before you really start to appreciate it. And every time you do your pre-flight, just keep in mind all these diagrams in section seven and keep building that mental picture and eventually this will become to the point where it's very very intuitive and you'll really uh, know and understand your airplane so that's all we have for section 7 and it's really that simple